Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hopefully, you're having a good week. It's another Thursday. Just flying by, man. That's a crazy week. This one's flown by. I got uh, a little golf uh, to play tonight in the old uh, the old Thursday night men's league. And got some what's in the bag kind of updates to do. But before we get into it, just want to let you know, hey, we all know title. This is the number one ball in golf. But you know how they earned that title? It's simple. The Pro V1 and Pro V1X are the most played golf balls in the game. Set those up here for you. <laughs> and you know what? It's not even close. In fact, most weeks, more than 70% of the field tee up a Pro V1 or Pro V1X. And these numbers are even more impressive at the amateur level, where they're the number one choice at the NCAAs, the U.S. Amateur, the U.S. Women's Amateur, and the U.S. Junior, just to name a few. Make title list the, your number one. Tee up a Pro V1 or Pro V1X on your next round and always bring your best. So, Pro V1, Pro V1X, give them a whirl when you get uh, when you get a chance. It's uh, If you haven't hit a Pro V1 or Pro V1X in a while, I mean, you, I, I guess you're missing out a little bit. It's, uh, yeah, ball have been uh, playing a little bit this year as well. I, I seem to always play some Pro V1, Pro V1X uh, throughout the year, so... Uh, it, it's always in my bag somewhat, no matter how many things I test or try or whatever. Seems like uh, one of those is usually going to be in the bag, at least for part of the year. But, uh, yeah, so we got another uh, another good week. Like I said, hopefully you guys are having a good one. I played a little golf last weekend. Uh, I played on Friday. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, went out, got out, you know, snuck out of work a little early and uh, and went and played. Played a, a decent front nine, uh, got it around. The driving is still just absolutely killing me. That's like the one one part of the game that's like the absolute bugaboo at the moment is uh, is the driving. Iron play was uh, was really darn good. I, uh, I hit a lot of really good iron shots. I just it seems like I was just punching out from trees and uh, you know just trying to uh, you know just trying to get the ball back and play uh, most of the day, which kind of stunk. So, but it, but it was good. It was fun. We had a good time. Good uh, three other guys to play with, but uh, yeah, the what's in the back stuff is coming around. I know people always ask. I was uh, I was down at uh, you know you guys know a few weeks ago I was down at uh, at Golf Pride's new headquarters down in North Carolina, and you know they're asking about like oh do you want some clubs regripped? And I was like I don't even know what clubs I'm playing yet this year. And people are like what are you talking about? I'm like well one I, I, nothing stays the same in my bag, uh, and two. I just don't know what's going to stay. Like the certain things I've hit well, certain things I haven't. I'm still on the search. It, it just really depends. So um, I've got a few things. Uh, I don't really have any reviews today. Uh, I've got a few things I'm working on. Um, I'm messing with the the new Golf Forever swing uh, swing trainer that they have, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it, it's got a whole like it's kind of more of a, a fitness based system that also helps with the swing. Uh, so it, it, it's pretty interesting. the The unit itself, which is kind of a long uh, it, you know, it's kind of a long pole and it's got grips on it and stuff and it's got some interchangeable pieces it is insanely well built. It's like aluminum. They've even gone so far as to like, it's got a swing weight. They're like, it's, it swing weights to like D3 or something like that. So it mimics a club when you do some drills, uh, which is pretty cool. And then I've got the new, uh, shot scope pro LX, which is a range finder, GPS and, uh, shot tracking all in one. So that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, I just, I did an unboxing video. If you go to, uh, either golf WRX Instagram, which is at golf WRX, or if you go to the club junkie Instagram at club junkie pod, I did like a little unboxing video, pretty interesting little unit. It's kind of cool how they did, uh, you know, how they integrated it all. Uh, but I did a little unboxing video. there. going to go try it out, uh, you know, on, on the course today. I messed around with the laser rangefinder um, a, a couple weeks ago. A guy had one. He didn't bring the the GPS portion of it or shot tracking portion, but he had just the laser rangefinder. Uh, so I, I got to use that a few times uh, as we played. But I'll mess with that before. I, I messed with you know shot scope a while ago, and I think right when the V3 watch came out, uh, they had a V3 uh, GPS watch. I messed with that when it first came out. And the shot tracking stuff is pretty interesting. They they go pretty in-depth there they're pretty uh in involved into to what they track and the the stats they give you and it'll be pretty pretty interesting to uh, to play a couple rounds with it and see see how it all pans out um the shot tracking stuff for me is stuff that i i really love the data i just i don't love the way it's tracked yet there, there's always the, the hardest thing is always like the, the putting side of it is basically you know where you know how the putting is you got to set the pins you got to you know kind of estimate your putts and things like that and i don't like doing it during the round because i'd rather just play 
Uh, and then it's, you know, you got to remember what putts you had and stuff after the round. So I don't love that portion of it yet, uh, but we'll mess around with this and, uh, and see how it goes. But I'm pretty excited. It's a pretty cool little unit. And um, like I said, pretty interesting to see how they packaged it all together and, and made it all work. And um, it's a lot of strong man magnets, I'll tell you that. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So I'll be messing with that uh, over the weekend. Like I said, I'll play with it tonight. Uh, I'm playing with it on Saturday. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, thank you guys for the questions yesterday. Um, I always try to do my little Q and A sessions on uh, on Instagram through the Instagram stories. And again, at Club Junkie Pod. If you have questions, or whatever, most people just want to ask. You know, like, hey, what do you feel about uh, you know Ventus TR versus you know Ventus Black or something like that? It's it's all usually a lot of it chaff questions, <laughs> but some clubs and stuff like that. Um, every once in a while, you get some interesting questions about like I think I had one yesterday that was just like recommend a shaft. You know, I swing 105. And you're just like, well, there's not a whole lot I can do with that there uh, in terms of what you're looking for for launch and spin and <laughs> things like that. But uh, but it's always fun. I always enjoy the questions, and I always enjoy everybody following and listening along, listening to the podcast, following on social. However you interact with me, I truly appreciate it because, you know, to me, why, you know, why would you want to follow a, you know, a husky boy like myself, uh, you know, just hitting golf equipment. But I appreciate that you do. So, uh, yeah, so today, just uh, like I said, it's probably going to be a little shorter episode because I'm kind of in between working on a few things in terms of uh, in reviews. But other than that, I've been uh, still hitting a lot of clubs and hitting a lot of combinations and trying things and testing things out and putting stuff in the bag and taking it out and, and all that. And uh, through all my rounds and everything, there's been uh, a few things that I, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised at in terms of what's, uh, you know, leading the pack and things like that. And then there's a few things that kind of are surprising even to me of what uh, what is leading the pack and uh, what's what's kind of shifted towards the bag um with this year i only have usually uh, most or the past last year i had kind of two events where i had to play kind of 14 clubs and you know it wasn't just a casual you know bring two or three drivers and you know a couple wedges or whatever so i've got uh uh usually i have two unfortunately the uh, the member guests that i that i went to last year i will not be attending that is actually next weekend but I have a wedding uh, to go to. My uh, my my sister in law, like I said, I think I mentioned the bachelor party <laughs> last weekend. My sister in law is getting married, so I'm unfortunately not playing in the member guest, but I am still playing in the uh, old boys weekend. So the Saragua, uh, as as it's called, uh, will be happening in the beginning of August, and that will be one where I have to bring. I always bring two bags full of clubs. I bring two bags full of clubs, uh, but I have to play 14 at a time. And usually, you know, Friday, Saturday are 36 and it's sometimes tough to switch out depending on the courses you're playing. You know, if you're playing a course and then you have to maybe drive to another or, or however you have to get to the second course, um, sometimes it's always it's, it's a little more difficult to uh, to get stuff in and out of the bag. And then I think, uh, I think like two years ago, I switched some stuff out. And then my final round, I was like, all right, I'm going back to, I don't know if it was Sim uh, or what. But anyway, I was like, I'm going back to this driver. And I switched a bunch of stuff out, and I had my two guys talking golf or whatever had cover on. Totally forgot I didn't switch out the driver and showed up and didn't have the driver I wanted to play in play. So it, it has bitten me a little bit, but I still do bring full two, you know, bring two sets of irons, two sets of we uh, wedges, um, and then uh, you know I bring uh, you know basically you know 28 clubs. So I gotta have two putters. You, you never know, but uh, but those ones there I'm gonna have uh, you know 14 clubs. But other than that, it's 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 on to, to bring a couple extra everywhere I go. So I'll be doing that. But uh, so we'll start out uh, drivers. So drivers, I've been hitting a lot of stuff. Uh, I know I've been talking highly of the Cobra LTDX, Rogue ST Max LS. Uh, I've been you know hitting some Stealth Plus. Um, I just uh, I I hit the uh, I just brought the the Rogue Max uh, out and hit that. I hit the LS better, uh, but I wanted to try the Rogue Max just to see, <clears throat> and then. Uh, uh, the PXG uh, 0311 Gen 5, I've been hitting that. Uh, so I've been hitting a lot of stuff uh, lately. I've still got TSI 3, which I, I, I keep putting in the bag wanting it to work, and I just know it's not because it's not a 10-degree head, but whatever. I, I put a really high launching shaft in there, an old Maizaki, and I, I go out there and I try to make it work, but it uh, unfortunately doesn't. So I've got a handful of drivers that I've been hitting, and uh, a lot of them have been doing really well, but the two that have kind of started to slide towards the top more than the others... Uh, which one is not surprising, the Rogue Max LS. Um, that one there, I've been hitting really, really well for 
pretty much most of the year. Uh, ever since I kind of put it in the bag, uh, I hit it pretty decent. And, and it's it's nice because I, I've struggled with Callaway drivers up until now. I mean, I think the, the OG uh, Epic was the, the the last one that I hit really well. Uh, and I hit a bunch of them before that really well. And then, you know, when it went to Rogue, I just I didn't hit Rogue well. Um, I didn't hit uh, Epic, uh, the, the second Epic. I didn't hit great. Uh, so it, it's been, you know, one of those things where I've been kind of struggling to find a Callaway driver. But this one here, it's just uh, it's one of those, it's it's just such a good combination of being a pretty neutral head, very little draw bias. Um, now the Triple Diamond is like the fully neutral or even slightly fade one, uh, the, the Triple Diamond LS. But this one here, I mean, the, the amount of stability you get, get out of it with being a low spin head, being pretty neutral... It's just been really good, and, and to be <laughs> excuse me, and to be honest, I've been hitting this with the the Fuji Kuro, the Ventus TR, uh, the Ventus TR Blue. I've been hitting that, and uh, that combo's been pretty darn good. Uh, it's like I said, I've been struggling with driver all year, but that one there is one that uh, you know, like I said, I can get away with some pretty bad swings with it, uh, but when I hit it well, I absolutely nuke it, uh, and it goes a long, long way. Uh, but just a really good driver head that, like I said, for me, thankfully, I've, I'm hitting it well because I, I like Callaway stuff. It's just I struggle with drivers, uh, you know, with them for the past few years. But this one here, uh, I really liked. Off-center ball speed has just been really, really good. I mean, I, I hit, uh, uh, I can't remember what it was. It, yeah, it was It was on Friday. I hit a drive on the 10th hole at Dearborn Country Club, which the 10th hole is, you know, it's it's fairly wide uh, in terms of driving. It's not crazy long. And I hit a, a, a ball that I really thought I kind of, kind of towed it. And I, I, you know, everybody was like, "Oh, that looks good," because you know, it was just kind of the trajectory was decent on it. And everybody was like, "Oh, it's a good ball." And I was like, "Oh man, I just don't think it's going to go anywhere." And I walked out, and I was the longest drive of the group, and it was, it was, it was kind of shocking because I, I, we pulled up, and there were kind of like, in, in that hole, everybody hit the fairway, and we drove up, and there were kind of two balls next to each other, another ball in front of that, and then you know, one up ahead a little bit. And we drove up, and I figured I'd be the middle ball at best. And uh, I wasn't. I was the furthest one down, which was pretty crazy. So uh, hit, an, hit an okay wedge to probably like 15 feet. And, you know, I ended up making a making a, a par, which was nice. But, uh, but no, just, just like I said, getting away with some shots like that, uh, you know, has been really good. And, you know, the sound and feel of it is really solid. When you hit a dead flush, it just has that soft feel that you almost don't even feel it. The ball just compresses off the face and goes. Uh, and I've hit some pretty long drives uh, when I've when I've struck the center of the face. So, uh, and put a decent swing on it because I've I've struck the st center of the face while putting some pretty shitty swings on it, and I have snap hooked some balls into uh, no man's land as well. So, uh, I've done that. But like I said, the Rogue ST Max LS has been really solid. I've been really impressed with it. Uh, it's probably it's man, it's it's, it's really close. I, I think I give it the slight edge over this next driver, but it's it's super super close. And I brought. The, you know both of these out on Friday, the Rogue and uh, this other one. But if, like I said, you had to say, hey, you got, you know, take your 14 best clubs. I, I think this would go in there, and it would probably Ventus TR uh, with it because that's what I've been hitting. You know, probably the best uh, with the, with this driver. The only thing with uh, the driver that I don't necessarily love is like it happened with Club Connects. Happens less with Allfit, but it's still there. Without the actual Callaway adapter in there, everything in a neutral setting looks looks shut. Uh, Club Connects was bad. Like it was, it looked like two degrees shut. Uh, all fit is is much better. It's like just slightly. I mean, just a slight bit closed. Um, so I always typically turn it just a hair down. So like with all fit, I turn it down 0.75 degrees, whatever the lowest down setting is, <laughs> and then uh, you know put it in that way, and then the thing looks dead dead square to even slightly open. Uh, but I would say that's the only complaint uh, with that, and it, it, like I said, it was it was even worse with Club Connects. Club Connects, it was like two degrees shut uh, in the neutral setting. You had to put it like two degrees down to, to get it to even look square. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, but that, that that's been like I said so far the my, my leader. Uh, you know, when I hit good shots with it, it's kind of a a true mid trajectory. I wouldn't even call it really too much mid high. It's pretty mid really flat uh, even when you hit it kind of right which i rarely do but if i do get kind of stuck and flare it right uh, even that the trajectory is lower than i expect and and uh the ball doesn't go near as far right and it, it actually goes pretty decent so uh, like i said overall the rogue st max ls just been really solid and then the surprising one the one that i kind of didn't really give a whole lot of thought to but the more i hit it the more i hit it pretty decent is uh the gen 5 uh, the PXG, <laughs> the 0311 Gen 5 XF. Uh, so yeah, the, the big forgiving guy. 
And with that, and I, and I think that the key to it is, it is a 12 degree head uh, that I basically play as wide open and as flat as possible. So when I had the PXG shaft in it, which I got fit into a Ventus Blue, uh, like I said before, I'd play, you know, they even set it in the PXG setting, as they call it, which is the flat setting, uh, and one and a half, I think it's one degree or one and a half lower. Uh, I can't remember, it's one of those two, but anyway. Set it low, had a Ventus Blue, and I, and I hit it pretty decent out in Arizona. Uh, brought it back, I think I played like nine holes with it, and I didn't hit it great. Uh, and then recently I put in uh, that UST Link Gunmetal, which is kind of their lower launch, lower spinning shaft. It's not crazy low, I would say it's kind of like a... A little bit like a TR in a sense. It, it's not. Uh, it's not quite Ventus Black low. Uh, at least it, it isn't for me. It's not Kylie low. Uh, anything like that, like a Mitsubishi Kylie low. It's not that. Uh, it's more. More of like kind of a mid low uh, launch, but low spin. And I've been hitting this, and it, it, and it's like three degrees open uh, when you set it down, <laughs> and you see a lot of face because it's got a lot of loft. Um, but I don't hit it crazy high. Like I said, I usually typically put a, a little lower launching shaft in it. And overall, I've, I've hit it really, really well. I mean, I've hit that thing. I, I Between when I played on, on Friday, I kind of split. So I played the front nine with the XF, uh, with the PXG, and I played the back nine with the Rogue. And now the back nine on, on Dearborn Country Club is definitely harder than the front nine, especially in terms of driving. Um, but I, I hit, I, I didn't necessarily hit any fairways, I, but when I was just off, I probably was just off. I was a little more accurate with the PXG. Uh, when I absolutely crush the PXG, hit a dead center, it's not quite as long as the Rogue. Uh, I do have to say it's, I don't think it's noticeably shorter, but it seems to be a little shorter. It doesn't have that same excitement with the ball leaves the face on it. Uh, it's definitely a little louder. It's got a little clank to it compared to the Rogue and, say, the Stealth and even the Cobra. Those all definitely sound a little better. Uh, the PXG's got a little clank to it. I, I'm thinking I might pop like just a little bit of hot melt behind the face just to see if I can quiet it down. Uh, just a smidge, but overall, the, just the, the forgiveness side of it, the accuracy, hitting it all over the face, high toe, all that, the ball just doesn't move off line a lot. It just stays kind of straight. And in terms of you know stability and straightness, I think this is number one. I'd probably give the next bet to the, the Cobra, the LTDX. Uh, that, that, I mean, it, it seems to stay on line really well, even with poor swings. Uh, but this XF uh, is it's just really forgiving. And, and again, I don't know that it's the longest uh, out of out of all the drivers, but it holds its own. It's pretty darn close, and it stays on line. And it doesn't go crazy high for being a 12 degree head. Granted, it's open, you know, as, as wide as it'll go. Uh, with the all fit adapter, I've set it all the way to like you know minus 1.5. Uh, so it sits, like I said, the face sits like three degrees open, if uh, if not a little more. I think I can't believe how I showed it to, uh, and they set it down, and they're like, that is wide open. Like, how do you? How do you not hit this thing right? And I was like, well, it's, it's actually pretty easy. I, I don't hit it right very easily at all. But uh, it is a, it, it, like I said, a really forgiving driver. If you're looking for something that just hits the ball straight, um, it, it'd be tough to go against uh, the, this 0311 XF. It just, it just really does. So those two are kind of the leaders in the clubhouse. I'm going to take Stealth out tonight. Um, I don't know what shaft I'm putting in it yet, but I'm going to take Stealth out tonight. Give a little n another run. Um, I had LTDX out two weeks ago, and I hit that pretty decent. Uh, I feel like I've just not been hitting, bringing the stealth out as much, uh, you know, with so many driver heads that that I have to kind of rotate through. That uh, I need to give it a little love and and see where it's at uh, with where my swing's at at the moment as well. So that'll go out to this weekend uh, today, and I'll probably bring it down this weekend uh, down to Coldwater, which I'll and then I'll decide. I'll, I'm going to bring two drivers. I just don't know which one. So things go well with the stealth uh, tonight. It may come down. Uh, if not. Well, then I'll decide and see what uh, what comes down with me <laughs> for uh, for my round on Saturday. So we'll see uh, what happens there. But the uh, like I said, driver race is, is kind of on there, and then uh, I've got to uh, I, I've, I've got the I, I want to hit the Kylai white in the PXG head. Uh, I I just have to cut it down a little bit. It's a little long. It's like a half inch long, so it's playing like forty five and a half. A little longer than I like to play, uh, and I know I can just choke down, but I still, I think I'm going to cut that thing down just so I don't have to worry about it and put that in the PXG head and see how that goes. And um, Yeah, just kind of see, you know, kind of mess with some of these combos and, and see where I can get it, but uh, things going well there. Uh, just, you know, like I said, drivers is just kind of crazy, but those two are kind of leaders in the clubhouse. I didn't expect the PXG to really put up much of a fight against the Rogue and the Stealth and the Cobra after hitting those, but uh, it, it definitely hangs in there, and uh, I've been been pretty impressed with it when I didn't think I would be. So 
That's drivers. When uh, we get into three woods, uh, I kind of out of the blue. Uh, I was just I've had some good couple holes of the three wood, and then I have to you know switch it up. So I've, I've been switching kind of between the Cobra LTD the, the Cobra LTD X Max. Uh, I've been hitting that a lot. The uh, Rogue ST Max, uh, the the Max, the the bigger one. I, I typically like the more forgiving heads for the most part uh, when it go to, comes to three woods. Uh, but hitting those two the most, and then also, I feel like there's one, oh, the TSI-3, which I think I've ruled out. I just don't hit it high enough. Uh, it's kind of like the driver. I'd almost need, like, a four-wood version of it. And unfortunately, if you go to add loft to that TSI-3, it just kind of shuts the face, and I, I just, I, I don't love the look of it. Um, it's probably the long, that, that is probably the longest three-wood out of all the ones that I have, that I've been hitting. Uh, just judging by uh, a couple of the rounds, I mean, having some of the yardages I've had and rolling balls up to either the front of the green or near the green from distances that I shouldn't be anywhere near. Um, hit a great shot uh, a couple weeks ago with the, you know, at that bachelor party with the Rogue, S the Rogue uh, ST Max. Uh, I think it was like 235 or something like that to the green. Uh, rolled it up dead, you know, dead center of the green almost uh, with a nice little draw. So that one right now is kind of there. But then I decided, you know what, the old Sim 2 Max from last year that I hit pretty well with the Speeder NX, <laughs> uh, the 70 gram Speeder NX uh, was laying around, and I was like, you know what, I haven't hit this thing in a while, let's uh, let's give it a whack, and I brought it out on Friday uh, to play with it, because like I said, I hadn't played with it in a while, and brought this bad boy out, and it was uh, surprisingly still kind of really good. I, I wouldn't say I hit it like absolutely amazing uh, out there. But I hit a handful of shots, especially off the tee, uh, absolutely hit some absolute bombs with it. Uh, the ninth hole, I thought, I mean, I hit it absolutely dead on the screws. And I started it right down the right tree line. The, the ninth hole is, you know, kind of a dog leg right. And if you hit it too far straight, you put it into the bunkers that are, you know, dead straight off the tee. Um, so I, I always, you know, I, I can't hit driver without hitting it into the bunker or even over the bunkers into the trees. And at the moment, I can't fade the ball because everything I do goes left, um, straight or left. So uh, I, I line up with three wood and just try to hit it as straight as I can down the tree line. And if I hit it down the tree line, I'll be right of the bunker. Um, and I should cut off enough where I'm in the rough or you know just in the fairway or basically maybe just roll into the rough. And that's how I play that hole. And I absolutely nuked one. And it was one of those like, oh, be good as it rode down the line. And then as soon as it got above the trees... The wind just shoved it left, and uh, I ended up missing the bunker because um, it pushed it a little far enough left where I just missed the bunker. Uh, but it was one of those I, I absolutely killed it um, off the t off the turf. Not as consistent. I had a couple shots off the turf with it that I just didn't hit it great. Uh, one of them was kind of a I was way back. Uh, I hit a terrible tee ball on like the sixth hole um, or seventh hole, and it's par five. Um, I had a really bad drive and. I was sitting in the fairway, just trying to bomb it down there as kind of you know as close as I could to get a wedge on, and just a bad swing. I was trying to hit it too hard, and then uh, had another one that I, I didn't hit too bad of a three wood. I kind of just lost it a little left uh, and had a, a wedge out of the trees onto the green, which wasn't horrible, but saw some success with it that I didn't expect to see. Uh, like I said, with some of these other ones, but I've hit that you know pretty decently, and uh, I don't think it's going to go in the bag. I mean, I think it's. Unless something really happens magically with it in the next, you know, few days, or something drastically bad happens with one of the other three woods over here, I'm probably, you know, not gonna play it. Uh, the other one that I actually took out and hit, and I was kind of shocked because, again, like I said, I typically like the more forgiving three woods, but uh, the, the the standard LS, the Rogue ST LS, so the uh, um, the little more tour inspired, smaller shape. I just took it out with the stock uh, Tensei AV blue in it and pretty, I hit, I hit two good balls with it. I only hit it twice. Uh, I took that out. What was it Thursday? I hit it off the tee both times. So I've not hit it off the turf yet, but, uh, hitting it off the tee, even with kind of a, a shaft that's a little lighter weight, a little something lighter than I would typically play. Um, I hit it pretty good and, uh, and it was pretty straight. It was pretty forgiving. So that I think now has a shot with the other two the the Cobra LTD X Max and the Rogue ST Rogue ST Max uh, maybe this has a shot so I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna uh, pop a different shaft into it I don't know what yet I've got uh, 
a couple three wood shafts kind of laying here that I could use. I don't know what I'm going to put in there yet, but I'm, I think I'm going to put a different shaft in there, try it, uh, see how it goes, and, you know, we'll see. But I, I know now that I have the fallback onto the Sim 2 Max, uh, just especially off the tee, that I, you know, I have something that I can definitely hit some solid shots with. And, uh, you know, not I'm not totally lost if nothing's working at the time. So I'll have... Uh, have that to go with, which is which is which is nice. Um, I do have to say the the, the rogue that uh, that LS the low spin one does sound pr pretty good. <laughs> the the feel on it's pretty solid, and uh, it actually gets up in the air pretty easily. And again, I, I don't know how much that was shaft related, how much is head related, but uh, it is definitely a little easier club to hit than I thought. Um, I haven't hit anything wildly off center, so I don't know how crazy forgiving it will be out there on the course but at least it's it's something else like you know, I said once I get a different shaft in there and see how it plays I think it's got a shot against the other uh, the other two uh, at least for for now uh, but they're you know like I said the the two three is a mess with but like, like I said I, I am impressed with the uh, with the old speeder NX sim 2 uh, combo it, it's still holding its own a little bit against some of the newer guys out there and uh but I'd still like, and I, I could still like to hit it off the, the turf a little better. But I'm, I'm just haven't been doing that yet. Um, the seven wood, I'm just liking more and more. I'm just, I haven't been just popping out of greens like I'd hope I would have. Um, but I've been hitting it really consistently. Uh, I'm, I'm just always a little bit right. I'm always, you know, would have been on the green or whatever. I'm just a little bit right at target for whatever reason. Um, and part of it is maybe I'm just not. I don't, I don't basically release the club because it, it was a stiff flex, not like an X. I played most of my stuff in X. Uh, X flex, this was a stiff uh, that I had. And I think a lot of that stiff flex was just to help get it up in the air. But I was always kind of really scared of hitting it left. So I, I think I just wasn't releasing the club. And everything I do, I'd hit right of target. Uh, so I was sitting there going, and I, I was like, I kind of want to go 80 gram shaft if I could. But I didn't really have any 80 gram shafts laying around. So I kind of was just going through my, my, my pile of shafts and just seeing kind of what was there, looking up specs and seeing what was kind of the heaviest uh, option I had. And I had a Nippon Reggio Formula MB Plus, which is they're kind of their mid-launch. It basically is built off the Modus 105-125 slash uh, profile, so kind of mid-launch, low spin. Uh, but it's built off that pro profile, a little stiffer handle section. And uh, I had this in a Hanma, Hanma three wood that I think I told you I flat out retired because I couldn't stop from going left. Um, this is the shaft out of that. And when I looked it up, the 75X version of this is a 79 gram shaft. Now, granted, it's cut down much shorter uh, in a seven wood, but it's going to be heavier than most 70 gram shafts I have laying around. Uh, and I've got this thing set up. Same thing with the, the flat and lower loft setting. Uh, but I've just been hitting this thing really good, whether it's off the tee uh, or whether it's off the turf. I've been hitting it pretty solid. Um, not really, you know, not topping things off the fairway, anything like that. Uh, like I said, the only downside, I've been hitting stuff a little right of target. So I'm thinking with, uh, with this shaft here, having the feel of it being a little more stout, uh, maybe I'll just be able to force to release the club uh, a little more and, and, and hit it more straight. So that's the thought behind it. Will it actually happen? Who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll find out. The nice thing is I took, I had a PXG adapter laying around, so I put it in here. So the original shaft, uh, the Diamana, is sitting over there, ready to go in case this experiment doesn't work out. I can easily swap the shaft back out. Shaft back out. I don't even have to pull the tip off. So that portion of it is going to be pretty, pretty nice. I don't have to worry about uh, you know if I lose the magic with it. But we're going to try this thing out. Uh, I, I don't know how often you know we're playing the back nine at St. Clair Shores to, today. I just don't know how often I hit. I mean, maybe hole eleven. Uh, I'll hit it on. And that'll probably be about it. Uh, everything else I'll probably hit either a driver or eh, maybe 17 I could hit on. But I usually hit driver there. But um, I'll hit it on uh, I'll hit it on 11. I'll probably hit it on 18 because uh, we're playing the back nine. So I'll, I'll, I'll at least get possibly two swings in it. Maybe the par five uh, if I've got uh, you know like 200 out. I'll I'll, I'll use this or, or a little more to like 210 ish. Uh, I'll use this thing as well. But Right now, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty excited to try this thing out. It's, uh, like I said, the, the, the seven would have been kind of, uh, you know, falling in love with it in a sense. But, uh, you know, nothing is, is set in stone at the moment. We'll see uh, how things go. But I'm pretty excited to try it. And, uh, like I said, the, the feel of it, just giving it the old waggle in the basement, so far has been pretty good. 
as I'm knocking stuff off my desk like I usually do because I'm trying to put up all these clubs on uh, you know the camera to, for for YouTube. And if you want to watch this thing on YouTube, not that I don't, they you know, not that I'm saying you have to or anything like that. It's just me pointing clubs at a camera. Um, but if you watch this thing on YouTube, uh, if you look up Golf WRX Radio, that's uh, the channel, and then you know Club Junkie. So. So three woods, seven woods are there. Um, in terms of hybrid, I mean, I haven't really been playing much of a hybrid. Uh, and if I do, I'd probably toss in the the Cobra King Tech uh, if I was tossing one back in because I just, you know, things have been so good. I think it's starting to take over for the UW, uh, the, the Apex UW, the 19 degree. It's just a little long. Um, you know, when I hit it well, uh, and then it's, it's, it's a little long. And it's not crazy forgiving. You know, it, it's definitely neutral, which is nice. It doesn't want to go left. But... It, it doesn't also let you get away with as many shots as, say, like the King Tech does, or definitely that Seven Wood does. So those uh, go a little better. So the UW has been kind of just sitting in the bag, uh, kind of collecting dust at the moment, which is a little unfortunate. But one of these days I need to break it back out and see if uh, see if it still has uh, has its magic. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people saw from my Q&A session on uh, yesterday, My the photo was uh, the new... Titleist T100s, so that was those were in the bag uh, on Friday. Uh, I kind of threw them in the bag just to try something a little different. Hit them really well. Uh, I know it could have been, you know, it's it's potentially just a honeymoon phase, but the T100s I hit really really well uh, on that uh, on that Friday. And whether it was off the tee, whether it was off the turf, whatever, just easy to get in the air. Uh, they go, you know, they. they I'm not saying they're hot. They don't go crazy far. They're they're a little shorter than my my P770s. So my P770s, where you know if I have a shot that's like 162, I'm probably going to hit, you know, or like say 165. Uh, I'm I'm going to probably try to get the seven iron there, um, depending on wind and all that. But you know, it, it's a it's the seven iron is like a 160 to 165 club. With these, they're a little shorter. Like 160 is about the max um, that I'm going to hit a seven iron there. Uh, the eight iron is 150. Like those those kind of 55 shots and stuff like that are, are definitely not going to be here. I mean, I'm going to move to next club up, choke down a little bit, and uh, and try to hit that number. But one, these things feel great. They're extremely soft. They definitely feel a little better than the 770s. Uh, definitely really solid. Uh, somebody asked me about the turf interaction of them, and they actually get through the turf pretty well. They, they've actually got a, a fair amount of bounce to them. Uh, when I played on Friday, it was, of course, not like crazy rain, soak and wet soft. But it was a you know a typical Michigan fairway. I mean you'll take a decent sized divot if you get down on it. Uh, all my divots were were pretty medium. You know there were nothing there was nothing huge other than you know one or two really steep swings. For the most part though, good shots. Pretty average uh, to slightly less than average divot. Uh, and hit some great shots. Like uh, I was on, on hole two, I think it was. I hit uh, I hit a drive. The one drive I hit right all day. I hit it right over the trees into the ninth fairway. Was it nine or? Eight fairway, whatever it is, but anyway, hit it over, <laughs> over the trees into the other fairway, and uh, I had 170 uh, to the flag, and my basic my my thing was either punch it out into the fairway, uh, into the other fairway, or try to go over the trees and see if you can hit the green. So took six iron, hit a just absolutely flush six iron over the trees, up over onto the green, onto the back of the green. So it was one of those just. Hit it really well, and I hit a lot of really good shots with these things. So overall, confidence is high. Uh, I, like I said, love the feel of them. The look of them is great. We set them down. I mean, they pretty much look like a blade. Uh, I just today bent them one degree strong, so I should uh, now. Like I said, I'm, not, I'm still not going to hit that seven iron 165, but I should have no problem covering you know 160 all day, uh, and even maybe getting a couple more you know maybe 162 out of it or something like that. Uh, but bent them all one degree strong. It didn't really, I mean, I know that you're always like, oh, it'll add offset. Didn't really add any noticeable offset. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm playing five iron through pitching wedge right now. The four iron is kind of, a again, one of those things where it's it's in between Mizuno uh, fly high, uh, MP fly high, the black one, or the tour edge tie utility. It's going to be one of those two. It just depends on which one I hit better. And right now, I mean, I just haven't hit either one very well. So uh, the T100s, though, in the bag, uh, you're probably asking, why didn't you just go T100S if you want a little more speed? One of the other guys in the office kind of is hitting the T100Ss right now. So I uh, took the T100s. And, uh, but like I said, uh, it's got Modus 120s. Uh, Modus 2 or 120 in there right now. 
uh, which as much as that's kind of a lower launching shaft, I played the 120 in my, I think right when I got my ZX-7s, I think that shaft came in them uh, in my ZX-7s, and I didn't love it in those heads, uh, and I switched it out, but so far I've hit this really well in these heads, so uh, it's staying right now. If they need to go, I might mo move to Modus 115. Uh, I've got a set of those uh, in, a, in a box, and that 115 weight, that little lighter weight, uh, with having maybe just a slightly firmer handle section in the, in, in the 115. We'll see. That could be the next one here for the uh, the T100s. But uh, overall, really liking them. Like I said, I mean, six iron down, absolutely flushing. Four irons just too much. I had a shot with uh, with four iron. Was it off the tee? Um, and just like I said, just just a lot of club uh, at the four iron length. So I think I'm moving to one of these utilities. A little hotter face in the 4-iron, a little bigger. Uh, let me get away with some shots, and I'm going to move to that. Uh, and then 5-iron, I think I'm going to stick with just uh, the T100. I didn't really hit any 5-irons lately, so I'm all right there. But uh, the T100s have been been really good, and, you know, like I said, the, the feel. And, and forgiveness-wise, you can get away with some, so, so a little bit of, you know, a little miss you can get away with. If it's something crazy where you barely catch it on the grooves on the toe, um, you're probably going to have some problems with that. That ball's probably not going anywhere. But if you just miss it, uh, even a little bit low on the face, they actually go pretty well with all the tungsten that's jammed into that thing. Um, they, they tend to move pretty decent. You can get away with uh, a, a fairly poor swing um, and, and still get, you know, you, you're, you're, you may not be on the green, whatever, but you're probably going to be just in front of the green, have a little wedge on uh, or something like that. You, you're definitely getting away with some shots. I hit one where, um, I can't remember the yardage, it was on 17. I think it was like 161 uh, to the pin in the back. And I caught it just a hair fat, and I mean it never left the flag stick. It was a great looking ball went there, and it just hit the front of the green. So um, stuff like that, like I said, you can get away with. Uh, you know, still in the green, I can still putt. But uh, shots like that, you can still get away with a little bit if it's something where, um, you know, like I said, you're missing it all over the face. You may struggle a little bit, but if you can kind of keep it a little bit closer to the center, uh, you're still going to get some forgiveness out of these heads and. Uh, so far, like I said, we'll, we'll find out tonight if it's the honeymoon phase, and if the honeymoon phase is over, um, then we'll see. We'll uh, maybe either go back to B770 or throw Gen 5s in or whatever, um, but we'll see what happens. But right now, uh, hitting the T100 is really, really well. Wedge-wise, um, it kind of, I mean, I'm playing that SM9 uh, in the 54. Uh, I'm going to take out the PXG wedge set, the full 50, 54, 58 tonight, uh, just to kind of give it a little love, see where I'm at with that. Uh, but really, this, I'm, I'm so comfortable with that 54D grind uh, in the sand wedge that it's going to be hard to, to knock that out. Um, and the one wedge that I've kind of, again, been surprised with is uh, my old SM8, uh, SM8 Raw 60D grind, which I, I know I told everybody I had. I got it when I got fit for my wedge set. And I just never played it. It just uh, it seemed to have too much bounce. I just wasn't ever I never was consistent with it. I mean, the face looked brand new. The whole thing, other than being raw, looked brand new. Uh, I probably hit, you know, a handful of balls with it before I kind of hung it up. I just took it out on a whim uh, just to try it, and uh, I've been hitting it really well. I think uh, I think before I was just getting I was getting steep with it and probably getting a little behind it, and the amount of bounce is kind of bouncing the, the leading edge up into the ball. I was probably kind of hitting it fat. Uh, with here, I've been trying to, like, focus on being shallow with it and have a little shallower swing. And it's worked out really well. I've hit some really good shots of this thing. Uh, I've become a little more comfortable with it. So, uh, like I said, I'm not going to play it tonight. I'm going to play the PXG58 uh, BP grind uh, and see how that goes because that's like 13 degrees of bounce. This is 12, uh, but totally different kind of sole shapes. Uh, but kind of take that out and see and just kind of see is, is one going to kind of lead the pack over the other. But at the moment, uh, this SM8, uh, you know, the raw SM8 60D grind, I've hit really well. Um, it's, it's kind of crazy to say that, uh, that it's done really well in the bag, but it has. And like I said, I mean, the, the nice thing is a lot of trailing edge relief. You can kind of open it up, still have a good amount of bounce out of the traps. It still works. Um, it's a club that I probably hit out of the trap more than any other 60, just because it, it's got so much bounce. It's got a little float to it. It has no problem getting through even with some like light fluffy sand. You can kind of pop the ball out pretty easily. Uh, but like I said, even some lies that have just been in the rough or have just missed the green, short-sided, you know, you kind of get the ball kind of up quick and just let it kind of hit, release, and, and roll down to the the, the pin. Uh, I've hit a few uh, a few shots like that that have just been really kind of touch shots that I've, I've pulled off. And, again, it could just be stupid luck or it could be the wedge. So uh, right now I'm going with it's the wedge. And um, I've uh, so far, like I said, hit it, uh, hit it pretty solid. And something that I did expect to pull down out of the rafters and actually use, I figured I'd try it once. 
so far I'm, uh, I've been pretty impressed. So that may go back in the bag on Saturday. Who knows? We'll see. But right now, like I said, PXGs, uh, the Sugar Daddy 2s uh, are going in the bag for at least tonight just to, you know, like I said, mix it up a little bit, see how, uh, see how those go because I haven't played them in a while. But, um, and then putter-wise, uh, I mean, the Betonardi is still in the lead, followed very closely by the Lab, the Mez 1. And then, honestly, the Toulon Chicago has kind of fallen off. Uh, I, I might bring it out tonight just to give it a little run and not let it get too ice cold sitting in the, uh, in the staff bag over there. But it, it's just, I don't know, I haven't, it, it hasn't made a ton of putts for me yet, so I'm not, like, in love with it at the moment. Um, and then the same thing kind of with the Bat Attack, the PXG Bat Attack. I just reshafted it. I put a uh, the Fujikura MC, uh, the extra firm, like the extra stiff shaft. I put that in there. Played it last week uh, in my league. Uh, made one or two putts out of the gate, and then after that, it was kind of a struggle. And I think it, the the one thing is that it's just it's a much heavier head, and I think that feeling just makes me not try to hit it as hard. Like I'm just kind of slow. Like I I, need, I just need to hit, you know, swing the swing. Uh, and not try to kind of like baby it up there and all this stuff, but that heavier head, I think I was just taking too much off of it, thinking that I'd hit it by, and uh, I've been struggling with that. Uh, the Toulon, uh, Chicago, like I said, I, I love the head still, whatever, I think I'm going to take it out tonight. I just haven't been making putts with it. Not a, not a lot of putts, let's put it that way. So uh, I've been making more with the Bettinardi and the Mez 1. Uh, so those two there are uh, are still still leading the clubhouse. Uh, but like I said, Toulon may go out with me tonight just to uh, you know give it a little love and let it know that it's just, it's not in trouble in a sense. It just uh, it just hasn't been playing as well as its uh, its other siblings. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, and that's pretty much it for uh, for my what's in the bag. So tonight we're going. Uh, you know, I, I think we're gonna go PXG driver or no, I'm going stealth driver, stealth plus driver, um, three wood. If I get the 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 Rogue ST LS reshafted, that'll go in the bag. Uh, seven wood's going in the bag. Four iron right now. I think I've got sitting over there the fly high, so that might go. That'll probably go, and then T one hundreds, and then PXG wedges. So uh, and then two long putters. So that'll be uh, that'll be the bag to, tonight. So we'll take that out, see what happens, and then uh, if things don't work well, I'll bring something else down to uh, to old Bella Vista uh, on the first first Saturday's round. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, that's all I've got today. Again, if you uh, you know, or if you're listening, uh, wherever you're listening, please, you know, if you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. It always helps us out an absolute ton. Wherever you're listening to the podcast, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, hit that bell, all that notification crap. Um, I know it's a pain in the butt for you guys, but it does help the analytics and help our channel grow. So I would really appreciate that. And then also, uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, hit me up with any questions, concerns, anything like that, at Club Junkie Pod. It's the best way to do it. And, uh, yeah, I do my uh, try to do my uh, my Q and A session again next week on Wednesday. So, uh, anyway, hope you guys have a great weekend. Play some golf, have some fun, and uh, we'll talk next week.